All right, so we had an issue where when we walk, our character walks across the surface here, you could see he snaps above the ground. Uh, one way to fix this is in the, if you, you want to select your ground, which I'm going to name this ground instead of sprite. And down here in the ground, uh, you want to turn on build height mesh and then hit bake. And now you'll notice that it'll snap now the new mesh closer to the ground. And now you can see he's actually walking on the ground. We don't have that weird space in between. Let's go through, go ahead and select your dolly camera here. And let's go through these uh, settings here to kind of, um, and uh, also our dolly track. We'll go through each one and just kind of get a really good understanding of what all the dolly set uh, settings are. All right, so let's take a look at, you know, kind of everything. If we look at our, for example, down here, body section, and we have auto dial, and then we have search resolution. This is really the resolution or the quality between, and I'm going to go ahead and just lock the dolly camera here so that when I click off of it, we don't lose that. But if we look at our dolly track here, the resolution is how well it defines or it's able to find these two points or between these points. And if you look at our essentially our dolly track here, I'm going to lock this for one second. We only have three points, right? If I click zero, it'll take me to that point. If I click one, it takes us to that middle point, And then we have two. And there's also different stuff inside of here. Um, there's also a resolution setting here where if you take this up or down, you'll notice that it increases the resolution between each point. And resolution just means the quality or smoothness of the camera moving across. Now, the more you up the resolution on sl slower computers, um, the less that it's, um, you know, the, 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 if you, the, the, the more, you're, the less your computer will be performant rather. Now, if we go back to our body here and um, we look at positioning units here, there's these path units and let me just hide my ground for a second. Maybe they'll help us see. Uh, let's see if I can turn off visibility here. Yeah. Then it left the nav mesh on. Uh, and then let's select our dolly track. These are the different positional units. So if we change it from path units to distance here, this is the distance between each unit, and that's how we can adjust it. And what I mean by that is zero and one. So let's go ahead and turn these back on. There we go. Something else I'd, I'd like to do is instead of following AJ's transform, I'm just going to have both of them, both the follow and look at follow our character. Let's see how that looks. Using that same look at target. And I think that looks pretty good. And some of the things we can do is in the body here, we can adjust the dampening. The dampening is how far back or how slow we want the camera to lag. So it, it, if you, it, it, has, it actually does a lot. So even at point three, you can see, you'll find our camera falls way behind on the x-axis. See that? So you have to be careful with that dampening, but it adds a lot of personality to your scene. And then it does a little bit of catch up towards the end. Something else we could do is, let's see, in our dolly track here, let's go ahead and add another waypoint here. And this would be three, but we really, let's see if we switch these around. Just kind of shift these back a little bit. And at one point we could just kind of pull this camera in and then just bring this one way back here. Just kind of give it some personality. See, that's kind of cool. We're just playing with the dolly track. All right, so let's take a look at um, a couple of things. We're going to introduce a new character into this scene as our character's walking. And that's going to be our character that we're sneaking up on, right? So let's go ahead and open characters and let's just drag Todd back in and we're just going to place him right here. I'm going to hit F to focus and just make sure, let's see, let's select our dolly camera or dolly track rather. It ends all the way over there. And I think I'm going to select my ground and go to tools, pro builder, open my pro builder window. And for vertex colors, I'm going to apply a really dark color. And I'm going to turn off show nav mesh because we don't need to see that. And that'll let us see everything a little bit easier. 
including our dolly track. See that? So let's go ahead and drag Todd here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, actually, where is that waypoint at? Oh, the waypoint's all the way over there. So I'm going to grab Todd, make him a child of that waypoint, and then just reset his transform. And then I'm going to unconnect him. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to have a camera when he gets close enough to Todd, just going to cut. We'll have another camera here that cuts to Todd. Now for Todd, I'm going to go ahead and add, where's his animations? Uh, where is his animator? Here's his animator controller. I'm going to add that to Todd and his animator controller by default is, here we go. Here's our animator. Let's just dock these together. Is set to idle. So now when we press play, let's go to our game window here. We have this long walk system, which maybe is a little boring for a cinematic. We'll probably have to really shorten that down. But once he gets here, we want the camera to cut to another camera, just kind of showcasing. Maybe the camera will be something like this, where it cuts here. So I'm actually going to take my waypoint I'm going to move it way back here. I'm also going to go to my dolly camera, uh, dolly track, uh, yeah, dolly, wait my waypoint, put it way back here, and then just grab Todd and move him way back here too. Because that's a little. And actually, let's go to our dolly track and let's select three and two and move that back. And then let's take our waypoint, move that back a little bit. We're just kind of speeding up our scene a little bit. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just create a uh, empty game object. You can just call this, just put Dolly in front of game object and grab these two here and drop them on here. And then that's kind of our sub object. All right, so let's right click in here, go to Cinema Machine, and we're gonna add a clear shot camera. And this is what's gonna allow us to switch between. And what's really nice about clear shot cameras, it's an intelligent system that when the, the Cinema Machine brain gets close enough, it knows to switch to this camera. But this really is just a holder, this clear shot camera. And you could see it has a lot of the same qualities um, as our Dolly camera. Our clear shot camera has the transform and the look at in here. And then it also has this virtual camera here and we can position this virtual camera where we think that it would be best. So I'm going to just reset this and I'm going to just rotate it this way and bring it back. And just kind of position it here for now. That's not going to be its final position. We, we have to see how it all looks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this word clear shot here and then just click on virtual and just make sure that it says clear shot camera. That way I know they're all connected. And let's also reset this clear shot camera and then let's reset this one as well. And then that they're all both set to zero, zero, zero. And then we can just take this clear shot camera and just kind of There we go. Now it's fully reset. And do something like this for now. Actually, I think it might be cool to sort of exhibit this with a couple cameras because it's kind of boring to watch him just walk. So let's actually move this camera here. And then what we'll do is I'm going to make this zero. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna frame, once he gets here, like he walks up to here, I guess, or the camera gets to here, it's gonna frame where he's walking and then sort of the object of his attention, which is this kid here. Maybe we'll do something like this. And then what I wanna do is hit a space here and then in parentheses, I'm gonna enter a zero. And that way, when I hit control D, it auto numbers it. I mean, it's gonna auto number it anyway. And then we could take this clear shot camera here and then I'm going to reset it and then just pull this way this back here and then just do 180 here. And just kind of position that downward or something. 
All right, so a couple of things is we want AJ. So go ahead and select your Dolly game object. I was kind of doing some experimenting and turn it off for a second. Well, I'll show you um, a little in the next lesson how to combine those two together. We just want to kind of really look at the clear shot camera. So what we're using this for again is we're just using it so that it switches between these two cameras. So what I'm going to do is just go to clear shot camera zero, which is this first one here. And I'm really just going to kind of like go a little bit tighter in here and hit control shift and F, or you can go to game object align with view to align this camera with that view. So we have a little bit tighter there. Now, um, what I want to do in clear shot camera is under clear shot camera zero, you'll see this optimal target distance. This is the distance in which you want your camera to stay with the, the character as, he, as he's walking by. So the way that I generally do this is you can lock this. Oops, that's the static. You can lock this clear shot camera and then just select your AJ model because in here, uh, the clear shot camera, I want to grab my look at tar Todd target and I want to just drop it in to uh, look at override. Now, if this is missing, oh, not Todd, sorry, my AJ, where's my AJ guy? Here he is. I want to drop this in there. Now, if you don't see this, um, just right click on your AJ model and go to create empty. I just named this look at and then what you want to do is here I'll delete my old one and uh, I'm just going to reset this boop and then I'm going to grab that look at which is here and here's clear shot camera zero and then I want to grab my look at here and drop it in here and also this camera let's kind of just move this back into place here there we go, a little bit tighter. Now with this one selected, if I make this optimal target distance two, and then I make this one like maybe one, um, and both of these don't have that look at transform, or I guess they do. I wonder if I can should just, because this is the, um, let's see, that's interesting. Let me see if I clear this out because these are supposed to be, oh, it added them both. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So let me undo that. There we go. Okay. So what should happen now as if you'll see your, my other cameras up here and you can see it's grayed out cause it's not being used. But if I select my AJ model and as I'm going by, he'll keep walking and depending on how close I want that camera to trigger so let's select camera one here let's make this one two as well let's see oh you know what I locked it that's why so here's zero one okay then we have our AJ here and camera one on our collider here's two this one is also two and our priority is nine here. Oh, it's also for some reason this one isn't looking at AJ. There we go. So now you can see when you select your the on the cl the collider you can set the optimal range. So say I want this to switch, you know. And again, you want to make sure that you have a look at inside of there for each one of these or on the actual master look at. And then these will act as overrides. See how they say look at override if you want it to switch to this character or something else. So here I'm selecting AJ. He's walking by. And then as he gets closer to this guy, he switches to this camera. And that might even be too uh, too far. So you can actually move the, char the camera a little bit this way. Maybe a little bit down more. It's kind of off to the side. I'm just trying to find a cool angle. And maybe we increase this distance a little bit more. We'll do like three or something. And that way we get, I feel like these. this, this is just way too far out there, this view. So let's just kind of, it's just a really long walk to, to get to this guy. Something like that. I feel like we should 
low, shrink this down and tighten this up a little bit more. Or if you do feel like, say it's like a horror game or something, they have a lot of these uh, longer cuts. Let's bring this in just a little bit. And I also feel like my look at his way at his feet. Anyway, the whole point of this is to teach you more about camera uh, switching than to set your angles. So it goes like this, switches to this one here. And then what we'll do is that once he hits this waypoint, he'll play that scare animation. I think that's good for this lesson. And that's just looking at these clear shot cameras here.